What's going on guys? In this video, we are going to be going over the top three and by top, I mean the most popular indices and exactly how to trade them. So real quick, everyone should know by now what the S and P 500 is. It is the top 500 companies in America. The next one is the NASDAQ. This is your top 100 tech stocks. And that's really kind of false. There's more than just tech, but that's usually what people mean when they're talking about the NASDAQ. And then there is the Dow Jones or the Dow 30. These are 30 big blue chip company stocks. People will call it the boomer index, but over time it has performed very well. So we're going to start off with the S&P 500, the ticker symbol. This is how you trade it. It is the SPY. Here it is on trading view. It will mirror its index, which is the S and P 500. So if the S and P 500 goes up, say one or 2% in a day, this will pretty much mirror it almost exactly. There may be very, very small margin of error, but this is how you can trade that index, or at least hold on to all of those stocks that are part of that index. If you're wondering what those stocks are within the index, here it is on Seeking Alpha, which kind of gives us a better preview of it, what's under the hood. If we go to holdings, this is the breakdown of the S&P 500. So you can see the holdings breakdown. Technology is the biggest. We are in a bear market, so this is shrinking. And you have some of the other ones that are starting to uh, grow some legs, like maybe basic materials, Definitely energy over the past year, uh, industrial. So there's a couple that will start to outperform technology as time goes on, but it's a really nice, healthy balance. As you can see, nothing's really super over leveraged here. And you can see here's the top 10 holdings. It's still a lot of tech, but you got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett's company, Alphabet, which is Google, Exxon Mobil. United Healthcare Group, Johnson & Johnson, NVIDIA. These are all big names we know of. And again, there are 500 companies within the S&P 500. And what's nice is it also offers a dividend. So if you hold on to one share, which costs $388 right now, so it's pretty affordable for most people, you will get a small dividend. Right now, that dividend is... You can see the yield is 1.61. Uh, we can go over to the history. And you can see it has been a quarterly dividend. So most recently, they paid out $1.78 for that quarter. Now, moving on to the next one is the NASDAQ. The ticker symbol is QQQ. People may call it the Qs for short. But this is very heavily invested in the big tech stocks. So you can see over the past year, it has performed a lot worse than the S&P 500. If we just jump over to not that, let's change this. It's down. You can't see it because the post market is blocking it, but it's down around 25% over the past year as I'm recording this. The S&P 500, on the other hand, is only down about 14%. But volatility works both ways. If we change these both to five years, you can see the S&P 500 over the past five years is up around 40%. Meanwhile, the Qs is up around 70%. So it's just going to be a more volatile ETF to hold on to. And again, let's look under the hood. So if we go over to holdings, you're going to see it's very heavily weighted in tech stocks. So if you like the tech stocks, if you think they're beaten up and now is a good time to buy, and you're wondering what kind of ETF can you buy to have exposure to the tech industry, it's definitely the Qs. Almost 50% of this ETF is made up of tech stocks. But you can see there are other stocks. There are healthcare, financials, energy, real estate. So it does also have a healthy mix. And here are the top 10 holdings. You can see it's going to be very similar to the S&P 500, but they're weighted heavier in the tech stocks, obviously. S&P 500, Apple is only about 6%. This is almost double. So Apple is over 11%. Same with Microsoft. Uh, Tesla's in there. You got Meta Platforms, which is Facebook. 
Uh, looks like Pepsi made the top 10 and then Broadcom. And when it comes to dividends, the Q's does pay a dividend. It is significantly smaller than the S&P 500. Uh, you can see the very last payment was 66 cents for the quarter. So if you're looking for a dividend yielding ETF, the NASDAQ may not be right for you. You have less than 1%. If we go over to the S&P 500, that's more than double. You're getting more than double the dividend yield right now. So again, if you're looking for dividends, the NASDAQ is not really the right ETF for you. That is more for having exposure to tech stocks. But that is a great segue into our last one, which is the Dow Jones Industrial Index, or how I like to call it, the Boomer Index. But I kid because it is a solid investment. You got 30 very strong blue chip companies. And you could already tell on TradingView, they actually pay out monthly dividends, which is very nice. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Over the past year, it has fared much better than the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. It is only down 5%. And that's not even counting for dividends. If we account for dividends, it's only down around 4%. That's not too bad, uh, especially because we just came out of 2022. Uh, but again, volatility works both ways. You can see it is only up around 30% over the past five years. So it is the more conservative ETF. It's not going to have as extreme moves as the Qs, and it's not even going to have as extreme moves as the S&P 500. But let's take a look under the hood. We will go to holdings. It is only 30 stocks. It's not the 30 biggest stocks, uh, but it's, again, 30 blue chip stocks. You can see here the top 10 holdings. It looks a lot different than the S&P 500 or the Qs. You got United Healthcare Group at the top. Then you have Goldman Sachs, Home Depot, McDonald's. All of these companies are great dividend paying stocks. So let's jump over to the dividends because if you're looking for a dividend ETF, I personally would recommend this one. That is not financial advice. Do your own research. But for a stock that is trading at uh, $330, so similar to the price, a little bit cheaper than the S&P 500. Uh, but you could see, again, remember, these are monthly payments. So just last month, it was a $0.75 cent payment, $0.68. Cents. Uh, you have... 18 cents. So some months are bigger than others, as you can see. But if we go over to the yield, the yield is almost at 2%. So that is obviously bigger than the S&P 500. And again, I think it is very cool that you have that constant monthly payout of dividends. So that's why if you're someone that likes dividend stocks and you want to know what a good dividend ETF is, this could definitely be one that you should look into. I'm not saying it's the best one, but I'm saying that it is a great contender where you should check it out. But guys, that is it. Those are the three major indices and how you could trade them. The Dow is the DIA for the ticker symbol. The NASDAQ is the QQQ. And the S&P 500 is the SPY. You could type that into whatever brokerage account and chances are you are allowed to trade it, whether it's the full share or there's plenty of brokerage accounts that also allow fractional shares. So you could own entire indexes. Guys, if you like this video, make sure to smash that like button. And as always, I will see you in the next one.